They don't teach you this stuff at school. There was a report done uh, a couple of years back by the, I think it was the Federal Reserve in the States. They did a study of 100 school children and 100 average school children going to a normal kind of state school like we have over here. And they projected those people through to the age of 65. 100 of our kids, they found that less than 4% would ever have an annual income above $35,000, 35,000 pounds. 25% 20% of the kids in that class would end up living below the poverty line. More than 50%, half the class, would be wholly dependent on relatives, social security, and the welfare state. What kind of bloody school system is that? When I went to college, first person that sends me an email, by the way, after the weekend, it can work out from the DVDs which one's me, you get a prize. That's me at college. That was, our, uh, that was our group at college. I went to college because my dad thought it would be great to, to get a business diploma. You want to go into business, son? It was a two-year course, and that was the biggest wasted two years of my life. Why? Because I was taught by professional teachers. I was taught by people that had failed in business. The guys teaching me business couldn't run a business if their life depended on it, so they decided to teach it. In that photograph, and I'm not going to point them out, I went on one of these kind of Friends Reunited sites recently to do some research and see what happened to my old classmates. There's a guy there. This, this two-year course had a slot in the middle where they sent us out to work to get some work experience. This guy, because they like to pigeonhole you when you're at college. I was a pain in the arse for them because they couldn't pigeonhole me into any particular trade, you know. But this guy said, I want to go into banking. It was right, pigeonhole him. He went to work for Barclays Bank on the Friends Reunited type site that I looked on. He was proud to say that he's been with that bank now for 30 years. He went to college, halfway through his business course, he went to work for a bank and he's still there. The guy standing next to him in the photograph on his Friends Reunited site, it says, I'm a bit happier now because I'm off the antidepressants, but I'm still unemployed. What kind of business course was that? I learned nothing on that business course, because I was being taught by people that had failed. It's weird, and if you know my history, you'll know that my dad, uh, when he was, when I was a kid, he ran a hardware shop, and he kind of failed in business. He, he, He kind of bounced along the poverty line. But I actually learned a huge amount that I was able to take forward into the next generation by learning from my dad's mistakes. And you might want to just jot some of these down, because this is, this is useful stuff. My dad, when he had a great business idea, and he was a bit like me, he's always coming up with these wacky ideas, right? The people he would go and talk to were his bank manager and his accountant. They were the only people he knew in business. He would go, and he, I, I remember he'd come home for his tea, and he'd be so excited, because he said, I've been to see a bank manager, bank manager thinks it's a great idea. But I just said that the guy I was at college with He was in his business course. He went to work for a bank for 30 years. He's never run a business. He doesn't know a good business idea when he sees it. My dad used to go and see his accountant. He used to come home and he'd say, oh, John thinks it's great. John's advised me not to do that one. John's advised me to do this one. What do accountants know? I apologize to any accountants in the room. Actually, I I do have to be so careful this weekend because my bank manager and my accountant are in the room, right? So Jane, my, my bank manager, I do apologize in advance, darling. Jane has been so helpful. She is the best bank manager I've ever had. We're currently renegotiating the rate on my credit card uh, services, so she, she is fantastic. Accountants, God bless them. Accountants get their kicks. And Andrew, if you're in the room, I do apologize, mate. Accountants get off on getting a row of figures and another row of figures and balancing them. And they get all stressed out if they don't quite balance. And they kind of work the magic and all the numbers, that's how they get off. That. They get their kicks from adding up bits of, bits of numbers and things. Don't ever ask your accountant for directions in business. Accountants keep the score. They don't play the game. You should see my account bill next month. Jeez. (laughs) Just jot down, you need to get a mentor. You need to have a mentor who you can look up to who's got business experience. 
Don't do what I did and go to college and learn how to run a business from people that never run one for themselves. I learned from my dad about bricks and mortar businesses. My dad started off in his shop, um, and he used to rent the shop, and then he decided it would be a great idea to actually buy the freehold, to go and get a bank loan, a huge great mortgage, and buy this thing. And they had a survey done on the building and found that it needed loads and loads of repair. And my dad thought, that's good, because I can go and negotiate the price down with the owners and get it cheap. Fantastic. So he took out a huge great bank loan, and he bought this thing, which was in dire need of repair. But he hadn't quite sussed that the business model, the margins were so small, there was only just enough to keep the Reynolds household like fed and watered, there wasn't enough to pay for the repairs. I mean, I remember the frustration on his face when it used to rain because it had like an asbestos roof on this thing and it had come to the end of its useful life and it had holes in it and every time it rained, my poor dad would run around with buckets, putting buckets under the drips to stop the stock getting wet. It was pitiful to see, just the rage on his face. Imagine the disappointment when years later the council said that's, that's an unsafe building and he had to demolish half of it. My dad, he couldn't afford to go in the high street. You can see on the, on the chart here, the big red area in Winchester there where he had his shop. That's the high street area. That's where the public are. That's where the people are congregating. That's where the shoppers are. My dad had his shop in a secondary location which was kind of okay because it was a DIY shop and people would be prepared to travel a bit. And people used to take their cars and they'd pull up outside and they'd load up their bags of cement and all this sort of stuff. Until the powers of darkness from the council decided to put down some yellow lines. Screwed. Because my dad had kind of pitched his business there, he got his, his shop, he couldn't move the shop, That's, I'm buying that, I've got a bank loan out for it, I've got to keep it going but the business kind of dried up because somebody somewhere else took a decision which impacted on his business. The business we're teaching you this weekend, the lesson I learned was to be flexible. If something happens in a particular part of my business, like for example, if there's a big postal strike and it stops the direct mail side of my business, no problem because we, we go onto the internet side of the business. You have to be flexible enough so that if something interferes, you can move on. My dad used to have huge stocks. He used to have 16,000 items of stock in his shop. He'd, he'd stock the shop and then hope that somebody would wander by and wander in and that he'd have the right size screws to sell them. I learned from my dad about wholesale and retail. He used to get a manufacturer, used to make something. He'd sell it to a wholesaler. My dad would buy from the wholesaler. So as a middleman. My dad's margin was about a third. So if he's got something selling for 99 pence, He's paying 66 pence for it. And out of the 33p left, he's got to pay his rent and his rates and his light and heat and everything else. It wasn't a business model that worked. He also, he was in a market where the B&Qs and these sort of people were just coming to the fore. And he tried desperately to battle against the B&Qs. He couldn't compete because he's buying from a wholesaler. B&Qs are buying straight from the manufacturer and getting everything cheaper. So he can afford, B&Q can afford to sell cheaper than my dad. So his margins disappeared. The note you want to make there is that you don't want to have a product which is going to compete with the big boys. We're not going after Microsoft or something here. We're going to compete in little niche markets. 